Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna see one of the nicest nanos you'll find anywhere in Australia. All right, thank you for joining me on another episode of Parker's Reef. Now today, if you like SBS or if you like nano tanks, you are in for a treat. And potentially, if you like both, you're going to lose your mind because today we're going up to check out Julian's incredible SBS dominated nano tank. And uh, spoiler alert, this thing is incredible. So I, I don't know how much more of a preface I can give you. I've got a lot of footage to cover. It will be a pretty lengthy video today, but a little tip for those Australian viewers hang on till the end because I do have a very generous giveaway I've got five giveaways in fact from our friends at Pet Alliance who made today's video possible but uh, other than that guys I've got nothing to add other than prepare yourself grab a drink take a seat because your mind is about to be blown on one of the nicest nanos I think I've seen anywhere in Australia let's roll the footage all right, we are here at Julian's absolute jaw-dropping Cade tank here. He's going to take us all through it. Firstly, thank you so much for uh, having us here. Before we dive into any details, tell us about the tank. What is it? How long has it been running? Yeah, sure. Th well, thanks for coming out on a Sunday, Sam. Thank um, you. Yeah, so the tank is just over three years old now. So it was actually a bit of a COVID project started in uh, October of 2020 as a part of a big uh, home office renovation, but um, For sure. I guess we can talk about that later. But um, the tank itself is a Cade S2-600, which yep. is the 600 mil model, two feet yep. in uh, American speak. Um, doesn't have the cabinet or the sump, which we can also talk about a little bit later, but the, yeah, the tank some... itself is the two foot cube, but we'll go into some <laughs> of the other details of why it looks a bit there's some coolness going on yeah, in but, here. Um, I mean, apart from what's just within the glass box, the whole infrastructure around this system looks super, super intriguing. But um, so this system, three years old, did you start this from scratch or did you bring, like, bring some pieces across from other tanks or? Uh, everything from scratch. So it's not my very first uh, reef system, but that was back in uni days, okay. a, a good decade plus ago. So all <laughs> of that is long gone or in the roof at my mom's house. So, and I wasn't going up there again, but um, <laughs> Yeah, so all of this was from scratch. So the rock wow. was dry, uh, carob sea arches, dry yes. rock. Um, yes. I can flick you some pictures later of what that looked like three years ago. But yeah, um, cool. yeah kind of went with a, a bit of an unusual look, which you can't really tell now. But um, no, yeah, dry rock, dry sand. That's uh, the sign of a good scape, in my opinion, is once it's grown out, you, don't, like, you can just see coral. And <laughs> that's what this system is. It is jam-packed. That was, that was definitely the goal, so I don't know why I spent so much time mucking around with the details <laughs> on it, which ended up being completely covered in the shape changes anyway once those corals were Yeah, up. but it gave you the space to mount these corals so they can all get access to the light, the flow, and all do their thing. And the way you've mounted the corals in there to get the contrast on those colors is uh, super impressive. It's not a small tank, but you don't have endless amount of real estate to work with, and you've used every square inch, which is really, really cool. Yeah, for sure. The top down was probably um, a bit of a focus there in terms of maximizing the footprint for light. It actually kind of looks like a square from top down, but you know, because of all the different ledges, I tried to sort of avoid too much of a square. But yes. as you can see, as it grows out, it, it does kind of get pretty close to the glass after a few years. <laughs> and you can see by the green Monty at the back there. Yeah, that that's exactly, to get a bit straight the, once the exactly as it was my Monty. Magnet yeah, the magnet thing. cleaner just uh, gives it a little trim yeah. every time with the buzz cutter, basically. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, that, no, that's awesome. Now, so it's a Cade 60 centimeter cube, effectively. Yeah. Um, 180 liters uh, inhabitable, mm -hmm. which would be about, I think it's about 47 gallons um, US. Yes. Um, obviously that doesn't include the system and of the course. sump, but yeah, in terms of inhabitable, it's about 180 liters. Yeah, nice, nice. Tell us about, I mean, let's, we'll, we'll go from equipment from top to bottom because there's, there's plenty of stuff down the bottom, but uh, we may yep. as well start with what we can see already up here. Sure. This is a serious lighting frame <laughs> you got going on up there. It's, it's, it's one of my own heart. You know, I love light. So when I see something like that, it gets, it gets me excited straight away. Yeah, there's a bit of everything going on here. It's actually a bit of a Frankenstein, to be honest. I'm um, by no means a DIYer, and this has turned into a DIY project, which I really wanted to stay away from because... <laughs> 
you know, I'm glad, I'm glad it's, uh, you know, ticking some boxes for the equipment side, but uh, yeah, in terms of the setup, the hanging kit is super amateur, but you know, anyway. No, it, it looks was, fantastic, it kind of I went, love it. It turned into coral priority first over aesthetics of the outside, but um, this has gone through quite an evolution actually. When I first started the tank, I wasn't too sure what I wanted in terms of coral, livestock, things like that. So. I actually started off with just a small Kessel A360X. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, really sleek mounting arm, which you can actually see still there at the back there. It's actually <laughs> it's now- still utilizing. It's hiding cables now. <laughs> but um, at the time it was just a small Kessel, which I soon grew out of. But in t once I started getting interested in keeping some um, higher light demanding corals, like some of the SPS here, then um, I ended up upgrading it to a Radeon XR30 Blue mm -hmm. G, uh, yeah, G5. Nice, um, nice. And that, that was great. It's, um, that really, I think, allowed me to keep the, the stony corals that I wanted to keep. And you could really see the growth take on, which um, you know, may have been a coincidence with the, the time of how long the tank was running at the time. But nevertheless, it, it definitely gave a lot of nice coverage. And the additions, which is when it started turning into a Frankenstein, um, <laughs> was when I started noticing a lot of shading on some of these top acros as they started to branch out, they were sure. essentially killing the undersides of themselves. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, they're, they're all fighting for real estate there, so I imagine, yeah. Yeah, and, it's, and in a tight space, it's been, um, yeah, quite a pain to uh, manage some of them without breaking everything around it. It's, it's <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised how many <laughs> bits of frags have uh, ended up in the graveyard down the bottom, which we'll look at <laughs> later, but- um, It yeah, looks as of, clean as a whistle to me, but uh, yeah, yeah. Wait till you look at the back. There's a bit of a graveyard back there. But anyway, so yeah, the lights, I added these, um, it ended up being four. It was originally two Reef Bright XHOs um, added just for a bit of supplement light to help with that underside shading and yes. try to get a bit more growth, which the green acro there, which I don't actually know the name, is a good example of it, where it completely died back in the stem. Okay. The top um, was fine. Yes. But as I've added these fill lights, the nose has actually started branching back out and yeah, all that dead yep. has come back. But now I've got other problems of it growing into other corals. But <laughs> yeah, that's a good problem to have. Yeah, yes and no. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is, but also it's, um, there's a point where it's like, you, yeah, you start strangling out corals that you don't want to strangle of out course. with some of the others. But that's SBS nano life. Uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if you don't have SBS growing into each other, um, you, you can't really say you've got an SBS nano. <laughs> and you've got no shortage of them growing into each other there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's ended up being an SBS dominant system, um, which originally I think I was looking at a bit of a mixed reef, almost a bit of a collection tank and trial and error, what corals I liked or didn't like. So course, yeah. originally there was a lot more um, LPS. Well, not a lot more, I shouldn't say, but I think what happened was as I started adding the sticks and they grew out, they tended to take up a lot of the space. They yeah. would shade out what was below. So I started running out of spots for um, even LPS still, you know, yep. based on the light that I had, they still needed a little bit more. So that's for sure. And so I started getting, and I didn't mention the last fill light, which was the far end. This is why it's a Frankenstein. It's um, <laughs> uh, Delua's- uh, Oh, the Vitamini? Vitamini, yep. that's yep. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. So basically got three different types of lights on here and the uh, hanging kit is from Delua. Mm -hmm. This one is from Reef Bright. So it's become a real Frankenstein. It's put together with fishing wire. And, and <laughs> it looks yeah, a treat. It honestly does. And I love a mixer brand of lights because they do all use, well, not all of them, but a lot of the time they do use different chips. So you get slightly different wavelengths. We know LEDs are so narrow in their wavelengths. So giving a bit of a mixture is going to give you the best chance of getting a full spectrum. And um, I would say from the results, it's working damn well. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think in hindsight, I'd change to the Pro uh, for a bit more white sure. light with yep. that main light because both of these sup or all four supplements are blue. Yeah, so uh, you've got but, plenty of So even at its, when it starts to ramp up to its max, it's a fairly blue look, um, yes. which, you know, is still nice. But oh, um, It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I think it's more in hindsight or it, for a future tank, I'll probably give a little bit more thought to the end game rather than just kind of growing and band-aiding yep. on yep. top of it. But, <laughs> you know, looking at what's in here, I'm pretty happy. Absolutely. Now... <laughs> Moving from the, the top, I mean, we can see a little apex feeder there, but we'll get into apex bef uh, a little later because I can see a nice little uh, window into some activity down there. Sure. Still in the tank itself, we've got a decent amount of flow going in there. I can see a couple of gyres, uh, MP10 on the back wall, is yep. it? Yep, MP10. Um, yeah, so the flow is mostly done through the two uh, gyre, forgotten the model number, but it's the smallest one, sure. basically. Um, so, 
yeah, most of the flow is done between them. They get pretty chaotic in the afternoon, so we're probably okay. a bit short of that. Maybe in the next couple of hours, it start it might start splashing a little bit, yeah, well, a bit loud. Okay. Yeah, yeah, nice. <laughs> it's also because I've cleaned them, uh, yes. recently cleaned them. So I try to clean them every three months if I'm you know doing well. Uh, yep. Sometimes it goes a little bit further. So these got cleaned. Um, when the tank sort of hit its three year mark, I wanted to give yeah. it a bit of a spruce up, which bit was of a birthday, yeah, a couple of weeks, yeah, exactly, a couple of weeks ago. So, <laughs> can already see a bit of coralline growing on it, but you know, prefer coralline than anything else that'll grow on there for sure. Um, but yeah, so when I do clean them, the it turns into a bit of a washing machine in the afternoon. And then after a couple of weeks, when the flow slows down, it's yes. a bit more normal. It's amazing the change the yeah. guyers go through with just the tiniest film built up on them. I can tell with the salt creep that builds up on this net. Yes. You know, within that first week or two, once they're cleaned, there is just splashing from the turbulence. <laughs> that, uh, but I do I do really like that um, chaotic flow, particularly for, for these sure. SPS at the top. You really see the polyps dancing on those yeah. millies, particularly the one on the left really dances in the afternoon. Sensational. Um, the MP10, to be honest, I just really wanted to give it a try. I love the no-cord look in the tank. And, yep. and if I could sort of have that look a little bit more with the Cade design, um, I would. I couldn't put it on the other side because of the um, the weir. Of course, yeah. Yep. So this is actually a, a CATO, um, which sure. is not yep. being used. ATO Reservoir, I should say, that's yes. not being used. So um, it's kind of, I feel it's still got a place because it does keep this sort of circular motion. Yeah, it'll time, add some more chaos to the two very sort of linear approaches from the um, guys. So Definitely. And if it wasn't so easy to clean, I do love that about it. I have a spare yeah, wet side and putting yeah. in the citric acid. But if it wasn't so easy to clean, to be honest, I'd probably just remove it and just stick <laughs> with the two. Um, but it is serving that purpose of keeping that movement. It and is for now, super handy that you can leave nice all the pump. wiring nice and neat and tidy. Just exactly. pull the wet side out. Yeah, that's, clean the, it. that's the dream, keeping all the cords out. But I couldn't quite do it without, um, yeah getting them on the outside. No, fair enough. Well, that's that's the equipment in the tank. We will come back, obviously, to discuss the inhabitants of both the fish and corals because there's plenty to cover there. But continuing on with the equipment theme, you touched on that, uh, that obviously this cage system does not have a stand or the, uh, or it does not have the cage stand or yep. the cage sump. You've gone and done something pretty special in here, which um, can you take us through that? Yeah, sure. So um, I mentioned this was a a lockdown project essentially yeah. and and when lockdown for melbourne first started um well it ended up being quite an extended lockdown period. <laughs> yeah, we got it pretty bad here. Remember. <laughs> um at the time this was just a spare bedroom it had a, a small ikea table with a computer on it but sure. after six months of being in lockdown and no end in sight um it made sense at the time to give the working space a bit of a spruce up so yeah. um I was thinking about an aquarium for a long time. Um, as I mentioned, I had one previously, but years ago, and I'd just been sort of thinking about it and planning it out for years, really, just yes. kind of watching a lot of YouTube and reading and just sort of trying to stay in touch with it a little bit, for but sure. without having a tank. Um, and this sort of gave me the opportunity to go, well, if I'm gonna spruce up this workspace, um, I'll try to get a tank involved as well. And then um, hit a few hurdles pretty quickly. Um, this work currently right now on the second level, and yes. this is a wooden, um, supported <laughs> apartments. So there's a lot of restrictions around weight and second level and wood support. So there's no concrete or anything, no slabs or anything here or steel. So um, I actually spoke to an engineer and they gave me a recommendation of no more than 150 kilos per square meter on okay. average across yes. the floor, which isn't a lot when you're talking. It is absolutely um, not This a lot. alone, it was, you know, when you include the glass, water only is well over 200 kilos. Yes. So that plus its cabinet, plus it's sump yes. in one footprint. I was a little bit concerned about it. Yes. Um, so when I was looking at it, I thought, okay, well, if I can disperse the weight, hence the out of position sump over here. <laughs> and Perfect. basically this whole thing is one unit, which I can't remember if you were doing yours at the time, but mm -hmm. it's actually mm -hmm. made up of um, the same uh, extruded T slot. Yeah, nice, yeah. It's aluminium. amazing so, stuff, isn't it? Yeah, so it's, um, this entire thing is actually one piece. Wow, which, beautiful. Um, Basically, it was an opportunity to have a workspace, have the fish tank, not have the whole thing fall through the floor into my neighbor. And, <laughs> I'm sure um, they're appreciative of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I'm, I'm quite close with them. And I went down to see what was underneath and there's no supports, no walls. It's, it's just basically the middle of her bedroom. <laughs> so I was like, this, is, this can't come through the floor. So, um, and I mean, we all love reefing, but maybe we don't love it that much. <laughs> you yeah, want it falling exactly. into your bed. I, I, yeah, it's, I've, I've got enough anxiety about it falling through the floor as it is, even though it's dispersed. Then you know, I, I couldn't have lived if it was all in one spot. So anyway, yeah to answer your question it's it's been all spread out as a result of that home office redo um so it's got storage and cabinetry there sump there and 
tank over there. And it's been very, very high end finish. The cabinetry on it looks looks second to none. It's a beautiful finish and um, you've it's done really, really well there. Thank you. It's actually from um, your recommendation. Yeah, the nice. Same um, company. The uh, Kitchen uh, Hayden? Design Center, Hayden. Hayden, yeah, 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 yeah. Hayden. Um, did an incredible job with the, yeah. uh, you know, filling out the request for glass open viewing yeah. and um, the little, you know, oh, yeah, yeah. fitting. We'll look at that later. But um, yeah, so really happy with the the work Hayden did, even to the air ventilation coming yeah. out the side of the sump. Oh, so perfect. yeah, he, he's incredible, and I'll definitely use him again if I ever did a similar project. It's um, definitely, it's just something else. When I mean, I, I don't get me wrong, I love what's inside the tank. But I feel if you can surround the tank with really high quality finishes and things that look purpose made, then it, it just elevates the entire setup. And this this stand and cabinetry and sump is just, it takes that to another level. It really just completes the whole package and looks a treat. Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so t tell us about, so you've got, you've got a sump off to the side here. Again, mm -hmm. we're talking about uh, spreading out the, the weight across a bit of a footprint there. This is obviously not just your standard cage sump. You've gone and got something fairly special in there. Yeah, this, I can, I'll take the doors off actually. Sure, yeah, go for it. This is a Hamali sump from Eric, yeah. Hamali Australia, who's a legend of a bloke. And uh, he uh, worked with me on giving the sump a bit of an upgrade. With the small tank, I wanted to try and increase the water volume just a little bit from, I believe the current sump that comes with this is 60 liter total. Um, this is, I believe about 90, so it's not a lot, but what it did allow me to do was have more equipment that I wanted. So things like a filter roller, yeah. which we can talk about some of the filtration in a moment, but things like that, I sort of worked into the plan in terms of maintenance and what I was realistically going to commit to. Yes. I really wanted to get a filter roller. Yes. I wanted to avoid taking socks out every three days. I wanted to avoid putting them in the, you know, through the washing machine. I just wanted to avoid all that. I know I wasn't going to do it and they would just get rotten it's, and end up building up. It's the best nothing. move. You have to know what you are able to spend time and money wise on the tank and, and find solutions to those problems before they become problems and that's exactly what you've done that's yeah great. absolutely and i think while i had a bit of a hiatus from keeping a tank and still but i was still watching a lot of content and reading a lot of content i did sort of start getting the idea of you know what am i willing to commit to in terms of maintenance and that's why ultimately i went with a filter roll because based on the the length of time before i changed that roll it's months like we're yeah. talking three oh. four months before i really look at yeah. it i'll I'll give the um, sump a bit of a vacuum around there, but um, yes. yeah, it's it's. I run the big really brother version up. of it, and yeah, I'm amazed at how long the rolls last and how much gunk they pull out. They're they're just incredible. Eric's done a fantastic job with those filter rollers. Absolutely, the um, it does have a lot more bells and whistles than I'm utilizing. Sure. Um, some of it by design, some of it just because it comes with the sump. Yes. Um, but you know, means I can grow into it if I ever need to put a reactor in there or do Absolutely. anything like that. I've got extra capability to do that. So I haven't needed to do a lot of that. So it is as fancy as it looks. It is actually quite basic. There is a, so what we've got in here is, so I guess we can talk about the water comes in through. Yeah, I just saw that bit of, um, yeah, you've done yeah. really well. So it is curving around, this. which I guess we can take a quick look at it, basically snaking around from underneath the tank. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it does come down from under the tank, run across here in sort of a, an S shape and then feed down into the Filter roll. Yes. Um, so the filter roll's obviously doing its thing. I did reset it yesterday. Um, I think you, yours was having a bit of a bunching. Yeah, yeah, it just um, bunches quirk. in a little bit. Yeah, mine, mine was doing that too. So I really tried to get it over um, yesterday or the day before, which is why it's quite clean at the moment. But it is a lot more <laughs> disgusting usually. It's it's the main workhorse for, for sure. sure in the filtration yeah. Yeah. department. I've even heard thing. people talking about uh, filter rollers replacing skimmers. Um, in, in the down the line and that if you have a high quality filter roller that your reliance on the skimmer maybe apart from oxygenation like diminishes to near zero uh, i could i could i could understand that for sure and um i guess moving on to the skimmer it is really the supplement right now it's yeah. not um i've had this offline for periods of time i haven't noticed any real change but what i have noticed is the aeration and yes. the um, capability for this to increase the pH of the Absolutely. water because I do run CO2 scrubbing media. Sure. So yep. I almost see it more of a vehicle of aeration yeah, yeah. Um, and adding to that pH. So in terms of its filtration capability, it's pulling gunk out and you yeah. can see there is a um, uh, waste collector there. Oh yeah, that's got some gunk all right. 
It does, <laughs> but that also hasn't been uh, poured out or emptied in probably three months. Yeah, well. So it doesn't pull a lot. And the reason I got that, because why would you, you know, if it's not pulling that much, why would you get something like that? Yes. I was away for six weeks recently. Yep. yep. And I didn't want one person looking at after the tank to have to deal with emptying a skimmer of cup. Of course, yeah. And um, yeah, every now and then it would, um, the skimmer would basically fill up with water and sure. you'd end up having a bit of a mess in the sump. So yep. for those two reasons, I've just left it installed because it was like, That's well, I handy. like the convenience, this not filling up, never yep. spills out there. So um, yeah, I guess in terms of that, uh, secondary piece of filtration. It's certainly a supplement, but you know, I think it. I think it's a really good uh, safety net should anything ever happen to the filter roll. Definitely. Is that a Himali made collection cup as well? No, it's an Octo. Oh, this one here. It's yeah. a Octo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. Quite so clever. I haven't seen the... a lot of them in Australia. I was no. I was sussing them out for a while. Um, sometimes when I go away, you know, yes. it might be more than a week. So basically, my maintenance routine is basically weekly. Yep. So if I'm going to miss more than a weekend, um, I want to consider some things that'll, you know, keep the system running smoothly while I'm away. And Absolutely. because I was going away for six weeks, there's no chance that um, if I didn't have it, that this wouldn't have problems. So, yeah, yeah. you know, so putting that in um, is peace definitely, of mind. A, yeah, peace of mind for sure. For sure um, yeah. So I guess moving on, yeah. So after the filter roll, we've got the skimmer. There are a couple of heaters just... <laughs> basically just haphazardly <laughs> dropped in there, but I uh, wanted to keep them in a spot that wouldn't ever empty. Absolutely, yeah, water yeah. In there. yeah. The water passes straight past them once they come out of the filter roller, so it's a good spot. Yeah, exactly. And then the third chamber here is um, basically Biomedia, which is essentially acting similar to, um, lift that off, but um, basically performing the same operation as the, the live rock and sand. Yes. Um, probably somewhat redundant now, given the tank's a few years old, but- um, yeah, It never hurts. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I was considering at one point taking it out and using it as like a tiny little frag area, but <laughs> I don't know. The, the frag rack's in the tank. Yeah, it's, I'm not a fan of it, so I really yeah, tried to avoid it, cool. but didn't really have any other place for it. So I was considering this, but I thought I might destabilize things if I muck around too much with the uh, Definitely. biomedia in there. But I think between those three um, and obviously the coral that are in there now, um, that, that handles all the filtration Side Most of things. Yep, yep. And then at the end there, there's, there's the return pump, which is a Neptune uh, core. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, runs really well, especially because I can't really get it out with the way I've configured it. Which, uh, <laughs> why, You've um, committed. <laughs> yeah, I basically plumbed it up in a way that is really, really difficult to get out. So cleaning <laughs> it has become a huge nightmare. So I barely cleaned it at all and, it, you know, touch wood, it... Uh, Hasn't had any problems, so um, I do have a backup cheap pump just in case something was to happen with the same fittings. Yes. But um, yeah, so far so good. Quality pump, hopefully it'll last a long time. And I mean, with all the cleaning and, and filtration that you're running here, the water that's, that return pump's pushing is going to be nice and clean. And it runs at thirty percent, yeah, so it's got plenty of muscle. It's up got sleeve. yeah, exactly. It's got plenty to give. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and I think what's happened with that is it's probably. Um, helped it age, uh, yes. age a little bit better, and it doesn't run into as many issues. It's yeah, not it's not going to be anything. running as hot, and it's not yeah pushed as hard. The power supply is not at its limit. Everything's cruising along nicely, which is always a good way to be with return pumps. I think you always want to sure. oversize it and have that up your sleeve. I think even hindsight with the with the um, wave makers, I would do similar. Yeah, again, okay. if I had yep. my time again, I'd probably up them a little bit so yep. they're running lower because I've got these running up to. 80, 70, 80%, and you, okay. and you can hear them when they're running yes. that, that loud. Yep. Um, but I think if I you know, kept everything running around 30% capacity, then it gives well, you a bit more wiggle room. You can't hear a thing in here. Like, it is silent. The, the, every bit of equipment is so beautifully dialed in that everything is just dead silent. It's, I mean, you, you do literally work in this room, so you don't want to be distracted by yeah. splashing water all day. I know a lot of people are really big on keeping it silent, and, and sure, I, I like to stay silent too, um, but... <laughs> I, yeah, we, we're not hearing it yet, but those, those uh, two gyres will, will crank up at some point and they get a little bit louder, but you know, I'm like, if it's keeping the corals happy, it's okay. Yeah, fair enough, fair <laughs> I'll, enough. I'll uh, deal with some splashing in the background. Yes, yes. And yeah, we can see that beautiful aluminium uh, frame there now. And yeah, that's, that's just, oh, look, it's purpose made. It just looks an absolute treat. Turned out really nicely. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. I think I think I got the inspiration from your bill. I can't remember because yours is three years too. So exactly. I feel like we're kind of doing things in sync. So sometimes I'd already committed to something before <laughs> I saw your video, or I'd seen your video and it helped guide my decision. I think this may have been one of the ones that um, what you did with your Dream Reef uh, yeah, nice, helped nice. guide me as well. But wow. um, yeah. I'm taking inspiration from this too because this looks beautiful. I also love I noticed, another thing I noticed was the acrylic floor down there under the sump. Yep. Yeah, the flooring. Um, 
I believe actually you've added a little tray, drip yeah, tray, which yep. I realized I probably should have done that in some areas of this, not all of it, but yep. this has worked fine. This has stayed really clean. Yes. Um, occasionally drop, you know, gets a bit of salt spray and things ah, like that. So but yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's in terms of a quick wipe down and the flooring, which we can talk about it a little bit later. It's, yeah. it's all throughout there and um, it keeps it looking quite sharp and you know, it's, it's acrylic, it's easy to clean. So. Exactly, just wipes up and if you do wipes get some water on there, it's nothing. And it, it, in this instance too, where you've got lighting under there, it reflect, reflects the light up nicely, so it keeps everything nice and yeah, bright. Yeah, it keeps it clean. bright and yeah, exactly. When yeah. you've got things like cables and random screws and bits and bobs, it makes it easy to find them when you drop <laughs> inevitably drop them. Definitely. Well, that's, that's the sump side, which is an absolute work of art in both the sump and the equipment and surrounding of uh, the sump. You've got even more goodies over here Oh, in, this in side, the, this little cabinet? Yeah, the, yeah, this little cabinet, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, the iPad is somewhat useless now since the latest update of uh, Apex Fusion. Oh. So unfortunately, that's an expensive paperweight now. Neptune, what are you doing to us? Yeah, it's an old, it's an old um, iPad. So unfortunately, with the latest release, uh, Safari is not supported. Or the Safari on the iPad doesn't support Fusion. Right. So okay. I'll have to, if I want to keep using it through that. Um, to be fair, though, it was more just monitoring. It was nice to uh, just of sort of course. see what was going on on the yeah, dashboard. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if I will bother replacing it because yeah. I've got it on my phone or computer anyway. That's but right, yeah. There's yeah the you, don't, you don't have to go far to the computer. It's... It, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah exa exactly right. Um, so moving on from that, um, there is the Apex Brain with a few of these little add-on accessories yeah, which beautiful. are um, very handy because, I don't know about you, but taking your phone out when you've got a wet hand, oh. trying to slide things around and muck around with apps is really annoying. So it's really nice to have some tactile buttons that you can click and basically... definitely. I've got one for my water change mode. Flip yep. that when I'm doing a water change, flick it off when I'm done. Yes. This is um, basically a maintenance mode, I yep. call it. So it turns off the auto feeder and it turns all the lights on. So yep. if I'm doing maintenance at night or very early in the morning and I need to see on. what I'm doing, I yep. flick that. Um, and these are just feed modes. So yeah. just different Amazing. depending on what I'm doing with feeding. Um, they're just basically how long is the feed mode. Yes. And as you say, nothing like a tactile button, whether it's even most definitely when you've got wet hands and you're working yeah. on a tank or your phone's doing something else or whatever, but yeah, phone charging or just a quick flick. Like there've been yeah. times where I'm like, Oh crap, we've got to quickly flick this on or off because I need the pump to start or stop or exactly. something. And it's, yeah. yeah, you don't want to be bumbling around for a phone Absolutely. trying to get an app to work or Absolutely. load or whatever. So, and they're a really neat setup from adaptive reef. Are they, they, they look great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they are. They're adaptive reef. I think they've got some new models out since I got this, but um, yeah, really happy with that. Would we'll, we'll definitely get again. Yeah, yeah, yeah very nice. Um, and then just down the bottom, just controllers for the MP10, and uh, that's the core pump there. Yeah, nice. And that uh, that tray that that's on, that's um, that 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 is a purchasable item. That this, black item. This, I think, that is the adaptive reef. That's from adaptive reef as well. Board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think. Yeah, that's, that's turned out really neat the way it's Yeah, my DIY little... skills wouldn't be capable of that, so I had to get <laughs> uh, You're something. underselling yourself, I think. Everything else in here is picture perfect, so I'm sure you're up to the task, but <laughs> I mean, why reinvent the wheel if someone's already made something fit for purpose? Yeah, for sure. And, and it was coincidentally like a pretty good size. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it, it fits close enough. So, and, um, you know, it was easy enough to kind of get little the little lighting or a, that yeah. I've already got in the cabinet around it. So... Yeah, really adds a bit of bells and whistles to it. Yeah, one of those beautiful glass doors nice. there, you can just see all the activity. So that's that's something pretty special. But uh, speaking of special, we need we need to talk about what's inside the tank now because yeah, <laughs> there's, <do> <laughs> there's so much in there to cover. And um, uh, yeah, I've been holding out, basically almost clickbaiting on this video, keeping people uh, <laughs> baited along watching uh, this video, waiting to talk about what's inside the box. So um, take us through it wherever you'd like to start, fish, coral, you name it. Um, all right, well, probably most of the focus will be around coral yep. more than fish. Um, I do have a couple of favorite fish in there, but I think most of the focus of this tank has been around the coral. I think when you've got particularly a, a cube shaped tank, somewhat yes. limited in fish choices in terms of fish that will want to probably spend a little bit more, will need a bit more room to swim up and for back. For sure, for sure. So you will notice there is a small tang in there, a Tamini tang. I um, did see him Which before, is the yeah. boss of the tank <laughs> by a mile. Um, although having said that, he does um, have a bit of a tussle with our probably second in charge, which is the um, Wyoming white clownfish that's probably hiding up the back there. Yeah, I'm I sure did if you get a view of her. She has laid eggs again, which is basically like clockwork. She, <laughs> she lays eggs probably every couple of weeks. So I don't know what the duration is, but it feels like there are always eggs there. There she is, just um, coming out from the uh, firework clove polyps there. And yeah, the, the 
the firework, Claude Poltz and the poor Zoas down there, you know, unfortunately, um, I guess, uh, unfortunately host her at times, which she's pretty <laughs> rough on them. But um, there is a Duncan at the back that's a bit more forgiving to host her. But um, yeah, in terms, of, in terms of the fish, there is the Wyoming white uh, clownfish yes. paired with the um, also captive bred, more standard um, Oki clown, the yes. little male. He's, he's back there tending to the eggs right now, doing... Yeah, he'll be good. oxygenating it and being a good husband. Being the yeah, father of the year there, good job. Yep, so th those two unfortunately host the corner of the tank, which is the opposite <laughs> corner that I can see. So they, they, I see them to feed, so the auto feeder feeds them three times a day and then I yes. feed them once manually. So I'll see them about four times a day at least, but for the rest of the time, or unless I drop a coral or something back there and then I'll know about it because yep, they're yep. pretty aggressive and they bite me basically every time I put my hands in. Um, so they hang out at the bottom corner. My favorite fish in here, who I just saw, who's gone out of... Was that the mandarin? The mandarin. Yes, I did yeah. see that one just Captain come and Fred. sit up on the, um, on the uh, red cappy for a minute before yeah, her, taking off. Yeah, we've given her a name, Little Miss. She's, um, she's the favorite of the tank. She's just, no one harms her. She doesn't obviously harm anyone. Yeah, um, yeah. I, Bought her when she was the size of like a pinky fingernail. Yeah, yeah. Captive bread. I know those captive bread uh, mandarins. They are so small. We're talking like so like tic -tac tiny size. Like <laughs> maybe maybe one and a half. Tic yeah. So she's there. still small. Yeah. But yeah. compared to what she was, she's two three times the size now. Yeah. Which when considering how small she was, she has grown quite a lot. <laughs> um, I was supplementing her feeding a lot with frozen food and you know trying to not necessarily target feed, but turn flow the flow off just so she would get some. But as the tanks matured, I've noticed how big she gets whenever I disturb anything and she gets the pods. Yep. So if I was to move a coral or move a rock or do anything that disturbs them, she's right in there and she's big <laughs> the next day. So it's feeding time. Yeah, she, the, the biodiversity seems to be supporting her pretty well the Excellent. last couple of years. So I haven't needed to necessarily uh, direct feed her, yes. um, but she's the favorite. Um, I did get the Tamini tank for a bit of um, utility. Yep. Um, don't know how much utility he's done. <laughs> uh, the algae is not too bad at the moment, but no, at the time when I not a speck in there. Yeah, there was a little bit of bryopsis that I uh, stupidly just left on a snail. Um, oh, it was wow. a um, fighting conch. Forgot yes. the yeah, yeah the stromber yeah. snail. Yeah. And um, yeah. I thought it was some kind of uh, native seagrass. I don't know. It sure, didn't look sure. like to what I'd seen at the time, bryopsis. Yes. And then sure enough, after a little bit of time, it was kind of spreading everywhere and it's yeah. hard to remove. It's, it's difficult. So oh, anyway, man. we can talk about some of those challenges later. But um, <laughs> sure. yeah, so I did get the tang in, not necessarily to eat the bryopsis because I don't think too many fish like the taste of bryopsis, sure. but um, just to keep things in check. Yep. Um, but yep. I don't know how much he does. He certainly For likes the, the frozen like, food. For <laughs> a couple of square centimeters of uh, rock work that he can find that isn't covered in coral. Well, he actually eats sand. He's, he's, <laughs> he picks at sand. You probably see him going in and out, just basically picking at sand. But um, yeah, no, he certainly likes the... Uh, yeah, there he goes. Oh, I also now. see a royal grammar there just darting off into the... Uh, yeah, there's a, yep, yeah. So the Royal Grammar is uh, probably the newest addition. He's been in there for about maybe a year. I haven't haven't added any, any fish in a while. Yes. Um, I think the Royal Grammar or the Tang were the last two to go in. There's only six fish in here, so yep. a small tank. Yep. Trying to keep the bio load down. I don't have a refugium or various other uh, filtration methods to deal with nitrate and phosphate. It's sure. basically just whatever the corals will take out and water changes. Yep. So yep. I didn't want to go too heavy on the bio load. Plus, I noticed six seemed to be the nice number. I did have. A lot more squabbling and bickering when I had more than six fish. Sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the the royal grammar is he he holds his own. He also lives in the cave that the clownfish <laughs> occupy. So and again, another fish that likes to hang out in the corner. <laughs> That's the hostel in that back corner. Yeah, for sure. And so when when the uh, and the tang likes to sleep back there too. So <laughs> sometimes when I, I'll notice they will get into fights and um, sometimes there's a bit of uh, nipping on the tang's fins yes. from her. Yep. And sometimes she's got scratches from him yep. scratching yep. her. They, I mean, they, they sort it out. It tends to be when they lay eggs. Of course. A lot more aggressive. So I do notice, sometimes I'll know they've laid eggs because I'll see they're beating each other <laughs> up a little bit. And it always it always heals up. So I've been fortunate yeah. in that regard. It's never gone into anything sinister, but she's got a bit of scarring from it. Yeah. So, But they both seem happy enough when they're well fed. So for sure. just make sure I stay on top of that. Um, I think that does it for... Fi oh, and there is also a... Um, a uh, lawnmower blenny. Nice, nice. He will usually sit on the red cap. It's probably because I'm standing really close yeah. to the tank. So they're probably, <laughs> yeah. they're probably bit, freaked out. They think it's maintenance time when I'm this close to the tank. So he's got a pretty good throne to sit on there. That's a beautiful shaped red cap. So I mean, if I was a lawnmower blenny, that's where I'd sit too. 
Yeah, it's a nice spot. He gets to watch me work, basically. <laughs> it just sits up there and directs. Um, oh, here comes the... Uh, oh, I can see the Mandarin down there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh no. That's... Ran out on cue. No, <laughs> I scared her. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, little miss. Typical. Um, yeah, so that does it for fish. Um, in terms of coral, yeah, where to start? <laughs> I don't know where to start. It's it's certainly it's certainly grown out a lot, which I'm you know super proud of, and that's yeah. definitely oh as um, you would be definitely the the I guess my pride of, of this tank. Um, in terms of the corals themselves, it's it's pretty acro dominated now. I guess SPS dominated. Um, there are still some spatterings of LPS. Um, where do you want to start? Go from top to bottom, if you like. Top to bottom. Okay. Well, pretty much all acros along the top there, with the exception of a purple stylo on the right, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which purple I really is like. Gorgeous. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's a coral that I've seen online a lot, but I don't see it a lot in Australia. So I was literally talking to a customer at uh, Deer Park yesterday, saying we're talking about corals that used to be uh, that common that you couldn't give them away. Um, and, and the three we talked about were Dallas, which I see you've got <laughs> a lovely piece there. Yep. Dallas, purple, uh, stylo or, or pokey, um, and, uh, bird of paradise, which is another one you've got in there. Oh, right. Okay. Um, well, I guess to, to, to your viewers, if anyone chasing that, um, reef galleria in yeah, St. Kilda nice. or soon to be North Collingwood suburbs. Yes, yes. Um, I, whenever I break or accidentally break or intentionally frag, um, <laughs> the frags go the, in there. Yeah. So the, the two birds nest and, um, well basically all of them end yep. up there. So yep. Yep. if you're looking for them, Good there's a know. lot of off cuts of these guys there. Well, they're corals that yeah used to be that prevalent that you couldn't give them away. Now they are in such high demand and we can't get them anywhere. Um, so yeah, there I, is somewhere we can get yeah, it. Yeah, well, the good story behind the, the Dallas here was actually m me doing the same thing, just yeah. trying to find it, couldn't find it anywhere. Heard it was such a basic, everyone's yeah. got a bread and butter coral. I'd seen it on videos, but I couldn't find it at any shops. And um, I think it was actually a video with Ernie. I, yep. Ernie was the one that originally got me into reef keeping when I was a teenager, back when he had his store in yes. Moorabbin. Yes. And um, so I, I messaged him and was like, I heard on your video with Sam that you mentioned <laughs> that you um, often frag it and basically give it to the store. So I was yep. like, can you just let me know next time you do that? Cause I'll be in immediately to get yep. it. Yep. And yeah, basically a week later he messaged and was like, I've just dropped a bunch off to Deer and Park. So I was in there that day. You know that Dallas has been in Ernie's tank or a history of his tanks for many many years so it's as tank hardened and that's it bulletproof yeah. as it gets yeah for sure yeah yeah it does cop a bit of stinging from a lot of corals around it but it's still holding its own and absolutely doing it quite well so i'm really happy to see it branching up and starting to split off because when it was hanging around down here it was uh battling for space yes, quite it hard been. so i'm glad it's finally broken it's away got from it's that. got its shoulders out and uh it, and it gives such a beautiful contrast on the sort of the tight knit uh panape and the the bird of paradise in there behind it which really gives a nice contrast to that area, which is really, really cool. For sure. Um, I guess some other favorites to call out would be, I, t I, I tend to like once the frag will start to take off yeah. and you kind of get that sense of mystery and excitement of, you know, which way is it going to grow? How, <laughs> how's it going to branch? How's it going to go with its color? Is it yes. going to grow out, grow up. I know you can tend to, you know, you generally know if it's a stag or a tabling. For sure, but, but even still within can do that, anything. They do some interesting Absolutely. things. Um, so some other favorites, I guess, would be the um, the little acro here that's, it's yellow with purple. Yeah, um, I see the one there. Oh, you might get a top down of it yeah, later. Yeah. But, um, this guy here, we'll get some top down later. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of when it first decides to really branch out. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm, I really get excited by them to see what they're going to turn into. So that's one I'm keeping an eye on. Absolutely. It's um, a stunner. Then, yeah, the other ones that are worth calling out, probably the, really like the um, red tabling acro, which I unfortunately broke the other day, hence the white. <laughs> super <laughs> it's a little funny there, yeah. Yeah, it was shading out the poor um, strawberry shortcake underneath yes. it. And I was fragging it to give that shortcake some light because it was completely browning out. Yes. And uh, of course I broke the whole table <laughs> off. So I've just tried to glue it back on, which was unfortunate. It is a but incredibly vibrant red though. Yeah, it's such it's, a rich color. And that's, that's what I love in an SBS is, I know people would get caught up on pieces that have got, you know, five or six colors on them in the frag with a macro shot, they look incredible. In reality, the bold, vibrant colors, maybe one or two colors at tops 
on a piece looks best when it's grown out in a tank, in my opinion. And there's endless examples in here from, from the Dallas to the, the Toxic Penaped to that, that beautiful, I don't even know, it's like a velvet red, mm. that um, Akko, absolutely stunning. And then you've got the, the caps there, this lovely, I love this, uh, the blue, that um, is a piece that obviously uh, I'm well, well familiar with. I've got a big canvas picture of that up uh, in, in my study, so. I was gonna ask you if that was the same, cause I hadn't, I got this, that piece as a tiny little nub from Deer Park. It was just yep. sitting on a frag tray with some other frags and I asked Dave, is that for sale? And he was kind of like, Looking at it, because it was very light. It wasn't on a frag, a tile yeah, or a plug or anything. It was just a little random nub that was basically all green. Yep. Um, but yep. it had a little bit of blue. So it was smooth skin. And I was like, I want to give this a go. Absolutely. And um, it's grown into this. And I guess aside from the, you know, corals that are starting to bloom, that's been a staple. That's, that's been my favorite star, coral the whole yeah, time. Yeah. Um, I love a blue coral. And um, that is, yeah. And the, the where you've got it positioned, where you've got sort of like a dark green, solid red cap, then into the blue with the green in the background, that angle right down there just gives you such a splash of color. It's expertly aquascaped for a marine system and um, just highlights every color beautifully. I can't take credit for all the placements. Some is purely by chance and luck, <laughs> but um, some of them I try to be a bit mindful of color contrasting. And I definitely thought about that with the, the red and the green cap and what yeah. I can put in between it. So the purple choice of the bonsai and yes. the silo was, was deliberate, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take credit for being the blue acro as well. <laughs> You've got to take the credit where you up can. There. But um, yeah, no, that's definitely been a favorite of mine. And um, if I had to pick one favorite of all of them, it's probably that one just purely because of how much it's grown it's and growth, what it's yeah. turned into over time. And even the way its growth pattern has changed, um, maybe we'll grab a top down later of it, yes. but it's changed based on the lighting and the flow yep. changes. If I make yep. a change, it'll, it'll dense it'll up def. or it'll yep. branch yep. out. So. Sometimes it looks good, sometimes it doesn't because you've got one part of your coral that's changing shape to another, but... Um... For those who are watching this video now that have only played with other softies or LPS, to me, that is the absolute beauty of SPS is that, yeah, you do start with a frag and you, you put it in a spot and it grows to your tank. It grows to the light, grows to the flow. You end up with these incredible natural looking setups like this where the, the corals grow to the, the space and the light and flow that's available to them. And um, they, they change, as you say, you make a, an adjustment to the tank and they change and it's just a continually evolving aquascape, which is awesome. Definitely. The other ones to call out, I would, I would love to call out this Goni, which is, <laughs> which is basically my other favorite coral, which has decided, of course, to, to <laughs> solve the day that you've on the come camera. around. <laughs> yeah. It's Goni life, yeah. It, um, I'm not too worried about it's sulking like that. It has done it once before when I added an extra light yes. and uh, basically it just balled up like that for a week yep. and then it just came yeah. back. Um, so I'll give it another couple of weeks before I do anything. I try not to, oh, sorry, that's the- oh, here uh, we go, auto feeder in action. That's the auto feeder on, <laughs> yep. We will get a chance to see the fish come out, I'm expecting here. Even oh though yeah, the cameras... probably stand out of the way. They're probably, <laughs> they're probably confused of why I'm so close. But basically that'll do two rotations yes. every feed. So you see there's probably about a small handful of uh, pallets that come out. Um, all right, hopefully they'll come out a little bit now. I'm not standing right over them. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that'll do two rotations in a, in a feeding and that will basically um, happen three times a day. So once first thing in the morning, once now, middle of the day, and then once again, late afternoon, so that, that does a good job of keeping things going while if I'm at work, like at, at the office at work or if I'm away. Yes. Um, and then I'll, I'll supplement by doing one frozen feeding a day, which is a combination of mysis and uh, veggie mix, yep. which is this spirulina and forgotten all the ingredients on it. But <laughs> basically it's for the tang, trying it's to keep, uh, yeah, keep the tang happy there. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, oh, we've got some of the fish coming out now. Yeah, yeah, grandma's come out for a look. So the grandma's probably the only one that's not a huge fan of the pellets. He's he's definitely a mysis, okay. mysis eater. Uh, the main the main um, the main fish that like the uh, pellets would be the two clowns and the tang and the blenny. So basically, um, little miss the. Um, Mandarin. Mandarin and the um, Royal Grammar are the two that aren't, aren't fans of the auto feeder. So if I do sure. go away, I do need to consider what to do with frozen food, but yep. once a day seems to be fine for, for them otherwise. 
that does lead on to the question. You, you've obviously set this system up for, for an interesting mix. I mean, obviously a good part of your time you spend in the office here. Um, and then obviously sometimes you're not working here and, and sometimes you're away and you've deliberately built this system to be able to withstand some time away with all of your um, automations and your uh, things like the, the skimmer collection and, and obviously large sump and apex and all that. Mm. What is your maintenance like on, on a system as established as this? Yeah, so I did, this is probably the area I put the most planning and thought into because mm. um, mm. I'm a Big believer in, as, as a lot of reef keepers will say, consistency, routine, balance, trying to keep your hands out of the tank. All those things <laughs> are, I agree with for sure. Um, but I think probably some of the success of this tank would be down to having discipline and sticking to that plan. So sure. some of the things are, that went into that was saying, well, I'm, I can commit to once a week doing some proper maintenance, which is okay. about 45 minutes to an hour of uh, a water change, which yep. is 10% uh, of the system volume, which is about 270 liters, 70 yep. gallons between display tank and the and the sump there. Yep. So it's about 27 liter water change, which is yep. huge. It's I quite manageable. To that. Um, yep. Yeah, I'll do that once a week. Yep. Um, and then when I do that, something that I think is really help this tank take off. And something that I was quite surprised by until I tried it was actually blasting the rocks off with a pump. So yes. turkey yep. based is fine, but bit, bit manual, but a pump works really well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've got a little bit of growth to get through there. So the, the turkey base is going to, I mean, it's, it just needed a little more flex and the pump's going to give you that. Yeah, for sure. And I was reluctant at the time to really blast the corals because, you know, I didn't want it because it's quite a fine um, nozzled pump yes. that I use. But um, I found the more aggressive I was with it, the happier the corals seem to yeah, be afterwards, yep, the polyps yep. out and things like that. So, yep. and also the, probably also because it's released detritus and things yes. that are trapped in there that you just wouldn't notice. Absolutely. So it's amazing how much will come out when you give it a really solid blast yeah. of the pump. So anyway, once a week, I'll give the rock work, the corals a good blast with the pump, yep. spend about 10 minutes doing that, and then do the water change where, um, yeah, just make sure everything's in order down in the sump there, but mostly just to get 10% changed. Um, I think it's a good number. I've heard, I think from BRS, they talk mm -hmm. about if you change 10% of the water weekly, the amount of pollutants will never double in more than a two month period. Okay. Might be wrong on that, but. It was something along those lines which made sense to me. It's, sure. it, it just basically captures all the unknowns that um, you just can't measure. Yeah, you know, the yeah, various yeah, exactly. contaminants from your hands and oils yeah. things that... Particularly, I mean, know. I was going to say here in Australia, we've got such good access to water. I understand we are on a, a second story of a, an apartment building here. So, I mean, doing huge water changes or all the times, not quite as easy as it possibly could be, but still good access to water. And at 10% at around, yeah, 25, 27 litres, a week it's it's still a jug like one of those water containers it's it's manageable enough easy for me to say i'm standing here behind the camera <laughs> you're the one that's going to do it every week but um that's for a system that looks as incredible as this that's not a ridiculous workload to to put aside 45 minutes a week yeah for sure and i'm happy to show you that afterwards if you like i've tried to do a few things to make it easier in terms of not lugging buckets around and doing things yeah. like that but it's certainly not an auto water change by any stretch sure. um Still considering if I want to do that or not. I don't know if it's worth setting up for 25 liters. Um, yeah. If I had a bigger system, I'd really strongly consider doing it. But Particularly with, with your method of, of blasting sort of all the detritus out. Then I assume you do that before your water change exactly. and then pull it out. So, I mean, auto water change is not going to be able to replicate that. Or, or you would be blasting the rocks and then setting the auto water change to do it anyway. So it's like... Well, yeah, that's it. And, or, or just hope it gets caught in the filtration, which, you know, it probably does. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think, I think those two in combination um, helps. So I do try to be really diligent with that. And even when I was uh, away for six weeks, I did have a tank sitter do that once a week, yeah, nice. which um, fortunately is an aquarium professional. So I knew what they were doing. <laughs> they know what uh, I don't doing. know if you want me to give him a shout out, but um, yeah. So I, you know, even try to maintain that. And yep. um, yeah, so going forward, I'm considering, can I get that to two weeks instead of once a sure. week, you know, try to get a bit more of my weekend back, but, um, <laughs> you know, we'll see. Cause it, it has worked so far. So even if I did dial it back to say half as frequent, twice as much, 20% yes. from 10, um, yep. every two weeks instead of one, I'm considering maybe doing that. Um, yep. that's probably in terms of immediate plans for this tank, probably one of the few changes that I'd make keeping things as, as they are. Um, Aside from that, I'm trying to think what other maintenance I would do routine. I clean the glass once a week, so... Okay. Um, Only once a week? Yeah, once a week. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It, 
I notice a little bit of film probably after about four or five days. Wow, I would have thought um, with the amount of light you have on there that that would be, it'd be like a 3 p.m. shadow on the tank. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear a lot of people say they're, they're you know, doing it daily or yeah. twice a week. I don't know, this, this <laughs> no, no. I probably, if I wanted to really, you know, not even see a speck of like that fine sure. diet Tom looking al algae, then I'd probably do it every five days, but seven days is, is fine. Yeah, no, um, hey, live the dream. Don't ask questions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm happy with that. So touch with that stays the same. I don't exactly. want to change that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So basically daily feed the fish, weekly yep. um, water change, blast off the rocks and um, glass clean. Um, and then it goes to more infrequent things like cleaning yeah, the pumps, clean pumps and every few yeah. months. Yeah, um, yeah that's pro replace things. Oh, probably yeah. Probably the next biggest maintenance is this, uh, refilling things. So refilling sure. supplements, um, yep. those yep. things like that, which we can talk about. Yeah. Speaking um, of your supplements and things, what sort of uh, parameters are you aiming for in this system here? Um, Parameters, I, I think the main one would be, the main one that I think most SPS keepers will talk about will be alkalinity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I feel like that's not a huge surprise. That's probably the one <laughs> I pay the most attention to. Um, oh, tanks kicking back on from its from auto, feeding. auto feed. Yep, yep. Yeah, so that's that's the apex automation just to turn off the pump so pellets don't go down the overflow yep. unnecessarily. Yep. Give the fish a chance to eat them before they end up in the filter roller. Yep, yep. Um, oh yeah, so alkalinity is probably the main one I pay attention to. In terms of a number, I don't, I don't, care too much about what the number is provided that I'm being consistent about it. Okay. Um, so I guess the first thing I look at is what's my salt mix. Yes. Because I think ultimately you're just battling against your salt if yeah. you're trying to keep the number different Absolutely. or wildly different. Yep. So I use um, Tropic Marine Pro Reef, yep. which is- yep. Great uh, salt. I feel like it's around 7.5 dKH, yeah. I think. Yep. It's a fairly um, natural I've salt noticed level. it's a little bit different between buckets, but it's more or less that. Around that mark, Close yeah. enough. Yep. Um, and for dosing supplements, I use Triton, uh, Core 7, yep. other methods. I don't have a refugium or algae, so for sure. the other methods. Yep. And they um, recommend a DKH of eight. Okay. So for me, it's anywhere between seven to eight is yep. fine yep. Uh, at the peak. So it does tank quite a lot during the day. I've noticed sure. because of the apex, I can see what the alkalinity is doing during the day. And yeah, it, it, right, it changes right. a full DKH from low to high. But yep. if I can keep the peak, um, between seven and eight, that's. I can fine. imagine, <laughs> like when when the pumps are at their peak, the lights are at their peak, the coral load per volume of water is pretty intense. So when they all start sucking up elements, you got you got to see a swing in there. Which obviously, so you, obviously you mentioned the apex is measuring. So you've got a trident on there that's doing tests as well, so you can keep on top of it. And then is it, have you got it just to monitor or are you dosing based on the results it gives? Just monitoring. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't trust it enough um, yeah. to, to, do, to take it out of my hands. Um, I find tweaking it through an app yeah, easy. when you need is, yeah, is yeah. easy enough. And, yeah. and basically at this point it's tuning, so it's, yes. it'll be a few mil up or a few mil down. Of course. So it's, it's not a big deal and I, I kind of like you seeing can, what I'm doing because I know need to have okay, a things are going well. Tank, I'm having yeah. to put more in, or you yes. know, maybe there's something wrong. Um, there's there's less being consumed. So I, I only got the Trident once this started really growing out because I was actually losing a little bit of control of the alkalinity just okay. testing it manually with a Hannah checker, yes. which is a great. I still use the Hannah checker of all course. the time. If in fact I actually trust the Hannah checker as my number one, that's kind of my go-to. Yep. Yep. So I reference. still use the yep. Hannah checker. Maybe once a week, but definitely like when I'm uh, changing the reagents of the Trident and when I'm calibrating, I'll yep. calibrate it to the to reading the I'm getting from that. Yep. Whether it's right or wrong, it doesn't really bother me. No, it's, it's more consistent. that I'm gonna use that as a consistency because yep. I've used it the, basically the entire exactly. time I've had the system. And that's As we mentioned with alkalinity, that's the key. Whether it's you know this value or that value, it's more important of how much it stays near that value. That's it. So if I'm getting, I think last test, this was around 7.8, during the peak of the day, which is at its, at its peak basically now because yep. the dosing of alkalinity just stopped and now yep. it'll go down about to seven, about a DKH once the do, um, corals have done their thing during the day and yep. then it'll come back up. So there is a pretty sharp um, peak and valley, but you know, I think in I terms think of fairly natural. trying to pump up the uh, pH with yeah. that. So the, the Trident Core 7 um, does boost your alkalinity pretty substantially. Yes. So I dose it at night for that okay. reason to try and stabilize because that also has quite a deep um, peaks and troughs as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. It is an interesting thing where uh, in with modern reefing now where we used to just chase alkalinity as a as the stability factor. I mean, obviously the other elements too, but now we have such a focus on pH and 
the, the alkalinity and the pH sort of uh, have an arm wrestle with it's each other. Interesting dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I see the videos and I see what people are doing with pH and trying to stabilize that and not worry yeah. about alkalinity. Bit oh, trailblazer for me same. right now. I don't think. I'm, yeah, I'll, I'll just wait and see what happens with that camp. Yeah. But I'm certainly uh, in agreement that the higher the pH, within reason, the, of course, you know, the better. So. Uh, anything um, you can do to get a good compromise between the two is, is a happy result. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I think, you know, one, that was one of the reasons I tr chose the Triton Core 7. One, because of the pH benefit of the alkalinity. Yep. Um, but two, also because it does contain all the trace elements and things yeah, like that yeah, too. So yeah, I'm not, sure. not super interested in hand dosing um, uh, any trace elements or things like that. And yep. because the Core 7 handles your cal calcium, magnesium, strontium, all that sort of stuff, plus yep. trace within that, yes. um, based off your alkalinity of DK, DKH of eight. Yep. Um, it keeps it simple enough, because that's the thing I care about. I'll keep yep. it at that, I'll follow that, and I'll trust that the solution's balanced. Yep. And I will test calcium and uh, magnesium very infrequently, yep. just to make sure. sure it's not wildly off. Yes. But to be fair, you can tell straight away, your Montes, oh, yeah, you, they are you will notice quickly the line, if, there, if there is a yeah. magnesium issue, Yep, you'll know immediately, you'll start to see, you'll start to see little patches popping up, you'll see lightning of color. Um, yes. You can tell pretty quick with magnesium. Um, for sure. So yeah, so basically it's all around alkalinity for me. Calcium, magnesium, they're on the Trident and I'll check the trends and yep. I'll, I've got manual tests, which I'll do maybe once a month. Yep. Um, but yeah, Otherwise, honest, I don't let, pay too much attention to the them. System run. The water changes help too, so. Yeah, of know. course, keeps things in check. Um, you mentioned running the Triton uh, method I assume that means you're also running Triton ICPs somewhat frequently? Yeah, so yeah, I wouldn't say I'm doing the method because I believe that's a no water sure. change method, but yeah. in terms yeah. of using their supplements, um, I use them because I, they're quite, you can actually see them down here if you like. Yes. Um, so there they are. Uh, there's the four, four of them there, which is two alkalinities, one calcium, one magnesium, and obviously yes. there's trace and various other bits and bobs mixed in with that. Yes. Um, it's quite a clean solution, which is nice because I don't really want to be cleaning. That's the same <laughs> reason why I chose the Tropic Marine Pro yep. Reef Salt because I don't really want to be cleaning salt no, bins. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, so stays pretty clean. Um, and yeah, I've forgotten the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It was just about running uh, ICP tests. Oh yeah, ICP yep. tests. I'll, if I'm here, yeah, I'll try to do them every three months. Yeah, fair cool. um, Just for a bit of a pulse check, make yep. sure I'm not testing completely incorrectly or something that I'm not aware of is getting out of whack. Yes. Um, I don't try, I try not to react too much to them. I yep. think uh, just given where the technology's at and people's trust levels for them, yes. I try not to jump at a, at, yeah, at a, always, at a value. Always but if I'm not noticing, to overreact to you. Yeah, so if I'm noticing over maybe the course of six months or a year that something is going up or down, I might then see what I can do about it. But sure. going back to what I mentioned before about the water changes, I feel like if you're doing that 10% a week or whatever it calculates out to a month, yes. I feel like you're going to avoid a lot of that unless For you've got sure. something like really properly rusting or yeah, adding something that you really yeah, yeah. shouldn't Yeah, your ICP be. might pick up on one of that. You have something spike through the roof um, and you, if you see something like iron or something go through the roof, you can check your pumps. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah. I, yeah, exactly. I did I did get a high iron reading once, so it did make me check the pumps, which were which were all fine. Then I did another ICP and it was back to normal. Yeah, exactly. So I was like, so. okay, I didn't change anything. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, I think a good indicator, which is hard one to just sort of, you can't read it in a book or watch it in a video. It's just, you, you know, once you've had your coral for a while, you know when it's you can happening, read them, you know absolutely. when it's not, just by looking at it after a, a yep. period of time. So sure, when you first get a coral, it's hard to tell. But after a while, particularly like that's what I mentioned before, the Montes and um, magnesium, there are certain corals you can tell when things are a bit off. So uh, I couldn't um, agree more. I think people either new to the hobby or not in the hobby would think you're... Um, crazy saying that that you can look at the tank and tell whether something's wrong i know i used to not i used to hate when people say it i'd be like what does that even mean it doesn't mean anything but yeah, but every experienced it. reefer will tell you exactly that they can look at their tank and say i don't need to test or they can look at it and go i need to get the test kits out something's up yeah yeah and, and sure. to, not something i'd recommend but um, <laughs> to a significant sure, other yeah. or a friend or something like that they'll be like your tank looks fine and you're like no 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 i know that's not right that should have more color or it should not have that splotch or it should not be like this yeah well speaking of i am due for an icp test soon and i'm curious because i've heard a lot of people talk about i think it's manganese yes and, yep. and goni so i am curious to see if that's what is causing it but interestingly there are goni <laughs> you've got them all around there are glitter goni <laughs> so that's an lv yes. but there's a glitter goni there which is getting way 
too yep, low light. Yep. They don't look it's, to be. They're, they're happy, though. but they don't. Yeah, they're not getting the light to bring out the colors as nearly as much as this guy. So yes. I'm wondering if it's a combination of given that one is getting prime light compared to the others, and a combination of something else. Maybe that's why. So. But again, I try not to jump at shadows with this because yeah. it's done it before. And every now and then, an LPS will close up and then it'll just be exactly. open up for a few it days. So can just be try not to jump at shadows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Often the overreaction is way more detrimental than, for than sure. the issue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, 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 would never, I would never change lighting or flow for one coral because no, you're just no, asking no. for trouble doing that. <laughs> I mean, if you had a total of three corals, yeah, sure, maybe. You've got, you know, a good three, four, five, six dozen in there. So um, probably closer to... A dozen, dozen. So you got a lot. Yeah, I did of count at, at when it hit three years. I was like, I'll count how many. I think there's about sixty-five. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not including the little nub frags, but like but colonies actual or decent-sized yeah. pieces. Yeah, which is. Yeah. I mean, if when you were setting this tank up, if you said you're going to put sixty-five corals in there, you probably would have probably would have almost laughed at yourself to think that that would be possible. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't have even known that I could grow them, which is kind of why I started with a mixed <laughs> reef just to sort of see what worked what or worked. what didn't. And it yep. certainly yeah, went the way of SPS, um, but um, still a few LPS kicking about in there. One of the reasons I did ask you to come around um, was that now it's getting to this point where the growth is becoming a problem. And yep. it's, I mentioned before, I try to uh, do weekly maintenance on it, but the speed at which these corals are growing into each other and killing each other it's 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 pretty full on there there are times where i'm like i have to save this coral by moving it and you know annoying a lot of the, the stability in this tank just to save a coral so i am considering options of what to do next with this tank whether okay. i um take out some of the fast growers there are a few in here that grow way you know way too quick compared to the others yes whether i just take those out and reset with others or whether i kind of just you know learn from the mistakes i made with this um, set up and basically start again, do a bit of a restart or, um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm considering you've reached the peak of the mountain here. Don't well, tell us you want to go to the bottom and climb again, that it, you have to enjoy this. This is why I understand the challenges of, of these corals growing into each other because it's jam packed, but, uh, tell me you've got to enjoy the system for a while longer yet. Yeah. yeah. Well that, that's it. I think I've, it's been kind of in this cruise mode of growth for about six months now. Yep. And I'm, I'm love to watch it for at least another six, yes. but there's coming, you know, there, there are points where it's, it's quite difficult to keep things going without them completely killing each other or killing my favorite <laughs> ones. Um, so yeah, I guess I was considering um, what other options are out there. You know, restart with just the corals that I like, more choice corals mm -hmm, versus mm -hmm. say the fast growers just to, you know, proof of concept to see if I could grow them yep. um, versus different corals. Like there's not a lot of LPS or softies in here considering sure. maybe a lower maintenance one. Yep. Um, yeah, so just considering different options like that. So I'm sort of at a bit of a crossroads, whether I just leave it and just see what happens. That, Cause that <laughs> yeah, is yeah. obviously an option too. And just kind of, of survival of the fittest and just see what happens. See what happens, yep. But, I'm not too sure yet. So yeah, yeah fair enough. Um, big reason was to kind of document it in its, what I think is probably its peak right now. Well, if, I tell you what, if this is not its peak, I'd hate to imagine what is, because it looks absolutely magazine worthy <laughs> right now. So it, it's a fantastic opportunity to get here and get some good footage of the tank and um, share it with the world, but also keep that memento for yourself. Yeah, for sure. And for those who are curious on what path you do take or even if they just want to see more details of this tank or just see how it evolves over the coming months i believe you've got a i mean i, don't, I say i believe i know you've got a pretty slick instagram which has got some cracking footage of this tank you want to give a shout out to the uh the handle so people can jump on and follow you there yeah for sure um i do have an instagram page which i try and take photos and videos of probably not as frequently as i should i'll try to do a little bit more of that but um yeah it's uh at reef jewels so yep. R E E F J U L E S. Easy done. I'll be sure to put some splashes over the screen now so people can see the sort of stuff they're looking at. But uh, yeah, there's some high quality footage on there that uh, will be fantastic for people to see more of the tank, but also just to see uh, where you go with it in the well, future. Well, that's it. Yeah. So document what's going to happen next. So <laughs> I don't know. And change is a bit inevitable with this thing. So we'll see if it's just going to be more, more of the same or if, I don't know, we'll see. Might take it a different direction soon. Epic. I will run to some uh, B-roll. I'm going to make sure I get plenty of uh, top-down footage and close-up footage of these corals because uh, the camera I'm holding right now really does not do justice. So I'll bring out the uh, big gun equipment so we can get some footage of that. But uh, I want to give a massive thank you for uh, reaching out and uh, inviting me here to see this tank because 
it's a massive inspiration and uh, seeing what you've done both inside the tank and outside the tank is is just um it's it's yeah setting a standard so uh, i am 100 percent certain so many people out there are going to enjoy this video and learn one two three or a bunch of things that they can do on their own tank to improve their process so uh thank you so much for having us awesome thanks sam and yeah thanks for coming out and grateful for the opportunity to give this tank some airtime on youtube love it thank you thank you all right, guys, there you have it. Whilst I run this footage just from the top down via the DSLR of Julian's incredible Cade Nano system, have a look at the colors and the growth of the SPS. In fact, everything in this tank is to die for, even the things outside of the tank around the infrastructure, the way he's built that stand, having the sump offset, all of the equipment in the sump, the apex monitoring system is just absolutely second to none. What a beautiful system Julian has made. And um, I'm super curious to see where it goes in the future. I know he is at a bit of a crossroads as to whether he just lets it grow out, whether he does some pretty aggressive trimming, including removing pieces that he's no longer a fan of, or whether he starts again, which is a, um, it'd be, it'd be a shame to say if it, to see if that happened, because this tank is just really at the epitome of nano reef keeping in my opinion. But um, I will be sure to follow Julian's progress and I will do so via his Instagram channel, which I will put all the details on screen so you can follow along there. Now, I did promise at the start of this video, way back near an hour ago, for those Australian viewers watching, our good friends at Pet Alliance did make this video possible and they have included five packs of the incredible Hikari range of pallets and the Sarah stick on tabs, both of which I use in my very own dream reef tank. I've got five of these packs to give away. So if you would like to win one of these, please do put in the comment section down below. Please do say that you are entering the competition so that you are from Australia and tell me which was your favorite piece of coral in Julian's tank. We will pick five winners at random and we'll get in touch to send you out this amazing pack. Thank you to Pet Alliance. Other than that, guys, I've got nothing further to add. Thank you so much for watching this long. I know it's been a long, long video, but despite the small size of this tank, there was so much to cover. I just could not edit it down any further. If you do have any questions or comments for Julian or myself, please pop them in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you're yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. It takes two seconds of your time. It costs no money whatsoever. Anyway, guys, other than that, I will leave you to it. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers, bye.